Hello, hello, everyone. Thank you all for taking the time to join us today. No, I'm really excited to be a part of this uh, exciting start to a, a webinar series, this cultural district. You know, this is not the first time that our great city has risen from the ashes, if you will. Uh, you name it, we've gone through it all. But I think one thing that really connects us all is that diversity of the people. And, and that's why we have such a great all-star cast. And this is hopefully with your support and with everybody excited uh, about the reopening of San Francisco and California, we can really rediscover our city again. So first up, we head to uh, Japantown, right? In the heart of San Francisco in District 5. So welcome aboard Susie, Susie Kagami. She is uh, the manager of the Japantown Cultural District. And so Japantown San Francisco dates back to 1906. And many of you know our historic landmarks, our Peace Pagoda, which is the token of goodwill gifted to us from uh, Osaka, Japan in the 1960s. Um, it was designed by Japanese modernist architect Yoshiro Taniguchi, um, who also designed the National Tokyo National Museum of Art and Imperial Theater, Theater and Okura Hotel. But we are so glad to, um, to be uh, remodeling and renovating this Peace Pagoda uh, in the next three to five years. Um, we will have a redesigned open space in Japantown in very soon. And so we're super excited about that. And as you, many of you know, it's been our gathering place. It's the icon of Japantown. Um, it's the gathering place for activists and weddings and community events since 1968. So it's a beautiful icon that we're very proud of. And, uh, and, and I, I think all of you know, um, how important it is to, to our Japantown landmark. Um, Japantown has so much to offer. You come for ramen or sushi or anime or one of our iconic fest street festivals, Nihomachi Street Fair, which actually draws over 30,000 people a year. And of course, our Northern California Cherry Blossom Festival and Parade in April, which is in its 54th year. And that usually draws 220,000 annually. So I'm sure if you haven't been to Japantown um, for one of those festivals, um, you must come come out. It's it's one of our pride and joys of, of who we are. Next up, we go to the Castro at the top of Market Street in District 8. So welcome uh, Cesar uh, Cadabas, who is the chair of the Communications Com uh, Committee at the Cultural District there. Um, our cultural district was created with the intent of preserving, sustaining, and promoting the LGBTQ history and culture um, of the district. And we do that by highlighting structures and sites important to this history, fostering racial, ethnic, and cultural diversity among our residents and businesses, and continuing, as always, to create a safe, beautiful, inclusive space for LGBTQ folks and our allies, um, for those who call this neighborhood home, and for those who visit from around the world. But the Castro is always a gathering place. And, and this past weekend, it was crazy, and it was joyful, and it was um, incredible to see people, again, from all over the world who look to the Castro as just this kind of uh, queer beacon uh, to our community. Um, and as you can see, now, I think it's still up there. Is the, the pink triangle is up on Twin Peaks, and that's a great kind of thing to see as you're driving into the Castro. Castro is home to the infamous Castro Theater, uh, which is the number one San Francisco registered landmark here in the city. Um, and if you haven't been, it's beautiful, it's historic. Every time there's a movie, there's always a live organ player um, playing music before the movie starts. Um, we have film festivals like Frameline and the Jewish uh, Film Festival happening at the Castro Theater, as well family-friendly events like Sing Along to the Sound of Music or uh, Grease and everything. Everybody really enjoys that. Uh, the other things that we have along here in uh, the Castro is we have a, a something called the Rainbow Honor Walk, and it's these plaques that are on the sidewalk that you can walk through the neighborhood and look at these plaques that honor notable uh, lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender and queer individuals from around the world who left a lasting mark on society. And it's a beautiful walk. Um, it teaches you, it, it shares our, our culture and our history. All right, now we are heading over to District 10 
in the southeast corner of San Francisco. So I want to welcome my friend uh, Eben Glenn, Operations Director at the African American Cultural District. Good to see you again, my friend. Um, our mission is to cultivate, enrich, and advocate for the African American cultural sustainability, vibrancy, and economic vitality. Um, we support um, small businesses, we support residents, the seniors, youth, um, artists. Um, you know, we, we, we support programs that are happening all over the community. Um, we're probably the second youngest cultural district in San Francisco. And so we didn't have banners. We didn't have any signage um, along Third Street and the Baby Hunters Point that said, now you're entering the African American Arts and Cultural District. Um, so banners were created um, by an African American artist by the name of Kenny Ferris, and they look fantastic. Um, we had a banner reveal at Mendel Plaza, which is literally in the heart um, of the Bayview, really in like the center of Third Street. Black History Month is arguably probably the most important month um, uh, for our people um, of the year. And so we wanted to come out um, with a splash and partner with KQED um, to support a black movie night um, where we reached out to eight local makers um, who put food and cultural competent materials in a black box and gave those to moviegoers um, to come to a drive-in movie to view a, a, a film that was directed and, um, and, and, and it was supported by African-American um, artists. And we also designed a huge Black Panther mural that was 40 feet high. Um, and we, we, the, the canvas we used was at 4346 Third Street. Um, the owners of that building are the McCray and Jones family um, who have three generations in Baby Hunters Point and, they're, and it's an African-American owned building. And it's where we're eventually gonna have our first community hub. Uh, now we're going to uh, Soma. My friend uh, Rachel Lastimosa is here. She is the Arts and uh, Culture Administrator at Soma Filipinas Cultural District in South of Market. And so this is our district um, boundaries. We're from Market to Brannon, second to 11th. Um, I believe we're the second largest after the African American Cultural District. And um, we have some pretty amazing organizations and arts and culture institutions and small businesses inside and outside of the district. Um, some events that I wanted to name um, are the Pistahan Parade that happens, Parade and Festival, excuse me, that happens every August, as well as the Pearl Stroll Festival um, that happens every December um, in Jesse Square. Um, you know, our, our history is over 120 plus years of Filipinos being in San Francisco and, and in the Soma. And so, um, you know, I, I, I would be remiss if I didn't say that, um, you know, this designation and, and our ability to be a district is really um, because of all the organizing and all the um, community work that's happened to lead us to this point. Uh, I had mentioned Couple Gardens. We are doing a lot of programming there. I feel like I'm there every weekend. Uh, this is um, a healing garden and event space that was brought to us by Cultivate Labs, who also um, brings the undiscovered creative night markets that have been happening since 2017, I believe. Um, here at the gardens, you'll find um, not only a stage for performances, but also a garden with calamansi trees, which is uh, coming up in August, at the end of the month, we are working with SF MoMA, as well as other um, organizations, Acción Latina and NIAD, um, to bring you the mini mural festival. Um, we'll be curating the weekend of 28th and 29th and focusing on artists Malaya, Malaya Tuyay and Francesca Gomez, and this is these are some of their pieces. Well, finally, we have my friend, the iconic Roberto Hernandez, from uh, Calle 24 Latino Cultural District in District 9. So I'm really uh, uh, honored and to be part of today's panel to share with you um, that here in the Mission District, we're the oldest neighborhood actually in the Ohlone's, uh, we're the natives here in San Francisco. And so the Mission District has the 
the biggest uh, uh, commercial corridor than any other neighborhood uh, outside of downtown, of course. Uh, but we have here uh, the highest number of Latino businesses in the city of San Francisco. We have over 30 legacy businesses here in our cultural district. And these uh, merchants uh, um, have over 30 years. Uh, in fact, two of them are 100 years old. Uh, one of them is Roosevelt Tamales uh, on 24th Street, which has been around for more than 100 years. Um, so we're um, when I talk about rich, we rich. Yeah. This is the home of Carlos Santana. He was born in Mexico, but at a very young age, as a child, he his family moved here into this barrio. And of course, this is where, you know, is the birthplace of, of the Latin rock sound that, he, you know, he came out with in, in 1969. Um, the Mission District also has been, um, the uh, has the largest outdoor festivals. We have, you know, from the Cinco de Mayo celebration to Fiesta de las America, Paseo Artístico, we do a, an amazing Dia de los Muertos a procession, which everybody's invited right. to. We celebrate the Cesar Chavez, you know, birth, on his birthday. We have a parade and festival for him. And then we also have the Carnaval San Francisco, which draws 500,000 plus people. And it's a, a three day pachanga, which you can come and um, to 17 block festival. Um, we have a parade that's televised worldwide on ABC. And so it's just uh, the Carnaval here is a, it, 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 if you, you don't have to go to Brazil, um, you could come here. You don't have to go to Cuba. You don't have to go to Puerto Rico. You get we have 36 different traditions all in one parade. Um, so please go enjoy the city. Uh, it's July 4th weekend. Time to celebrate and uh, enjoy some of the unique flavors that the city has to offer.